What if I could tell you how many neurons you would have found in the brain of T-Rex, the royal tyrant lizard who reigned pretty much unchallenged until an asteroid hit the Earth 65 million years ago? You would probably ask, how could you possibly know? And also, why do I care? Two perfectly good questions. But let me start with the actual news. According to a brand new study by Susanna Herculano Huzel, that's me, theropod dinosaurs, that's the biped fast running dinosaurs like T Rex, were the primates of their time with as many neurons in their telencephalon as you find in a modern monkey. T Rex, in particular, had baboon like numbers of neurons in its telencephalon. If you don't think that's very impressive, think of scheming monkeys that can swarm on you and trick you and steal food from your hands. But now make this creature of monkey-like smarts get bigger than an elephant with big claws on its feet and gigantic teeth that could pierce right through you. That is very much the stuff of nightmares for me. So how can I say that when there are no dinosaur brains around preserved in a freezer somewhere that I could turn into soup, which is how I figure out how many neurons different brains are made of? Because dinosaurs actually still exist. That's right. Technically, modern birds are still dinosaurs. They're descendants of the ones that outlived that asteroid that hit the Earth 65 million years ago and killed all large creatures on land, making way for the small mammals and some land-dwelling bird-like creatures that already existed then. So if you can figure out how many neurons go into a bird brain of a certain size, and you can figure out what size was the brain of different bird-like dinosaurs, then you can do the math and estimate how many neurons a dinosaur brain had. But first, you have to have good reason to believe that the same proportionality that applies to birds already apply to dinosaurs like T-Rex, which is what I just did. In a paper published in early January of 23 in the Journal of Comparative Neurology, I show that dinosaurs cannot be treated like a mixed bag of creatures like they used to be treated. Theropods and ornithischians and sauropod morphs thrown in the same bag as if they were all the same thing, which was how scientists had previously thought that dinosaurs were mesotherms, meaning neither cold-blooded like modern lizards, ectotherms, nor warm-blooded like birds, endotherms. But dinosaurs separate so neatly if only you're willing to accept that not all dinosaurs are the same, just like not all mammals are the same and not all birds are the same. Why should they? So, if you compare the brain and body size of different dinosaur species like I did, you find out that some, like a gigantic quadruped dinosaur, had just the brain size that you would expect for a cold-blooded modern lizard. And others, like all the biped T-Rex-like theropods, had just the brain size that you would expect for the species of birds that can be traced back to pre-asteroid times. Which makes it very reasonable to expect that the same scaling rules that apply to the brains of these modern birds like ostriches and emus and chickens also applied to the brains of T-Rex and its cousins. Which means that you can do the math, like I did, and calculate how many neurons these dinosaurs had, which was as many as primates today have. Why is that important? Because primates are these relatively small animals that carry a very large number of neurons in their brains, the largest amongst mammals. We're talking a couple billion neurons here. To have that many neurons, either you're a huge mammal like an elephant, a whale, or at least a giraffe, or else you're a primate. Or you're a crow or a parrot, even if your brain is not huge. Or you're one of those earliest birds like these 
theropod dinosaurs with a primate-sized brain. In any case, this means that very large numbers of brain neurons are not a modern invention. If neurons are the building blocks of intelligence, then creatures with primate-like intelligence already existed in the pre-asteroid world, and they were called dinosaurs. So yeah, not dumb lizards, more like mean, smart, flexible thinking, killing machines. And here's the kicker. Since I discovered a couple years ago that with more neurons in the cerebral cortex comes a longer life when you're a warm-blooded animal, I can also estimate that if a T-Rex had about as many telencephalic neurons as a baboon has today, then it probably had a similar life history as a baboon. It took about five years to reach sexual maturity, and it lived as much as 40 years. That's 40 years to use all those neurons. Modern birds with that many neurons, which are parrots and crows, can also solve problems and create their own tools and build their own culture, which means that T. rex already had what it takes to do all that. I have a whole newfound respect for dinosaurs. So, did you need to know that T-Rex had baboon-like numbers of neurons and could live up to 40 years, which means it had what it takes to build tools and technology and a culture that it could pass on to its young? No. But isn't your life so much more interesting now that you have that extra bit of information to think about, especially next time you watch a movie with dinosaurs? Also, you can be thankful for that asteroid now, or life would be much different, maybe presided over these days by T-Rexes that had figured out how to cook their food and afford as many neurons as we humans now have. Yeah, that's a movie I'd like to watch. Come back soon and I'll tell you more stories about dinosaur brains and how science works. See you soon.